It's the heat of the summer, and while some people are seeking air conditioning, we're in the middle of an apple orchard. We're at South Hall Farms in Franklin, Tennessee, and we're gonna learn all about apples. Cooking and agriculture are two things we have in common. <laughs> this is Chef Tyler Brown, the inspiration behind South Hall Farms here in Franklin. Tyler, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Tammy. I appreciate it. It's uh, Volunteer Gardener is one of my favorite shows in the world. I watch it every week, so it's, um, one it's of an my honor to be on it. I'm glad. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> Tell us about this phenomenal orchard because it is quite stunning. Tell, how in the world did you start planting an orchard with 1,500 apple trees? Well, one, one was uh, an excitement for cooking apples for sure. I had to start with that. But, you know, when we were thinking about things and elements that we were going to bring into the South Hall Farm and give people the opportunity to experience different elements, we wanted to have an orchard. And I really was excited about having espalier trees. Mm -hmm. With that, started researching the apple industry and found this tall spindle style of growing apples, which we see here with the trellis and the top lines with the center leaders, this tall spindle style. And what it allows folks to do is you graft the budwood onto a Geneva 41 rootstock, which is a dwarf rootstock. It allows you to plant the trees closer together and they also mature quicker, so you get fruit earlier. So these trees are between three and four years old, and we're already starting to see a crop as we see. This will be our first year of a harvestable crop. The first few years goal was they started at about 18 inches tall, that we took them out of the nursery, planted them, was to get them to crawl up the trellis, pruning them and training them, as we see here, to the trellis wires, but the biggest thing was to get the central leader to reach the top of the trellis before we really allowed them to produce fruit. So prior to that was picking off the flowers and buds. Um, That's hard to do, isn't it? it? Very hard. I know. And <laughs> truth be told, I let a few go because I wanted to taste. I was so curious. <laughs> Wanting to create something where we had a volume that we could share with our guests of apples so that they can touch each part of the season, fresh apples, a preserved apple, and the different ways that we will prepare it for them to experience the, the apple. So a uh, good friend of mine, David Hughes, who I've been close friends with for about 20 years and working in the industry and, and buying vegetables from, uh, we started talking about ways that we could do this orchard, what varieties we want. So storage apples, cooking apples, great eating apples, um, early, late. And so we landed on 35 different cultivars that we're producing here. We'll ultimately have about 2,000 trees and we've grafted each one of them by hand. Like I said, from budwood to the rootstock and raising them in a nursery and then we come in and plant them in the fall. You've got to obviously start with substantial um, bracing yeah. for the tree because this gets heavy. Yeah. So, so you've got uh, three, four different, no, five different wires here yep. to just kind of hold the branches in place um, with one big board here that's, that's, yeah. that's what you're calling the trellis. So, correct. So there's four wires that we really train on. And then the bottom wire was to hold the irrigation. Oh, okay. Got um, it. But and that was conception, but it's turned into we're actually training on some of these, the irrigation wire, but ultimately we will prune and it will continue to grow up. So we're at home, you know, you could take a eight foot high fence that you might have in the back. You're gonna want some wind to be able to get in there, some right. air for sure, and simply create, you know, put some staples in a line. And the key really with this is that dwarf rootstock. And there's a number of ones, I mentioned the Geneva 41. There's a number of different varieties that will work with, uh, budwood and a dwarf rootstock combination, getting them up to produce sooner than a real large mature apple that might take seven to 10 years. Um, and, and the advantage of this entire plan mm -hmm. is exactly what you're talking about. Let light get in, yep. air flow through. And what I immediately see is the ease of harvest. Yeah, so it's very accessible. They produce quite a bit. So the volume is, is pretty large for the size of tree that it is. And you'll see, you know, these smaller branches here, as they mature, they will obviously hold more. Um, but yeah, it, it's, they produce a lot, they're prolific. As I said, it's just a way to celebrate old ways and new ways. So we have old varieties, old cider apple varieties and things from France and England, um, some uh, as many old Southern varieties that we can find, you know, it's, it's celebrating the history of apples. You know, in the South, there used to be over 2,000 identifiable, identifiable uh, apple varieties, and now there's only 500. Um, so Shame. it's something to, to really respect, and, and we want to lift that up and tell that story as much as we possibly can. 
A large part of, of what guides me in the kitchen and through my journey in life really is curiosities, right? And, and I think one of my biggest strengths, I think, is recognizing things I don't know and the willingness to ask those questions and find people that are experts in those fields. So that's what I've done and, and just let that guide me through a lot of my curiosities because the questions keep coming um, as we explore new foods and new ways of, of doing things. And, and I really love to understand what it takes to produce a product, right? In this case, the apples. Um, because there's a lot that goes into that and there's a lot of respect that needs to be, we need to be aware of. Thank you for allowing us to, to come here. It's, it's stunning and I absolutely love the attention to detail that you've put into the orchard. It's, it's beautiful. Well, thank you so much. It's such a, a pleasure to share it with you and we look forward to uh, bringing you back to the orchard and sharing the progress with you in the future. I'll be here. Thank you too. For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.